Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Joseph. I hope everyone's doing well today. So this is my third attempt recording this because my um, HTC um, Valve keeps hijacking my audio without me realizing. So uh, just a big thank you to everyone on the channel. You guys are amazing. Keep up the great work. Um, the Discord's still open. Go nuts with it. You guys are always welcome in there. Um, I do check it regularly. Now, let's get into it. So, this is the second part to the clouds and rain system I had developed. Um, oh, sorry, weather system. This is the clouds and rain compo component of that. So you'll see here I get a cloud, cloud starts dropping raindrops. And we get an animation on the raindrops when they hit the ground. Okay, let's get into how I achieved this. Because it was nightmares and that's why I didn't go up last week. So, I've got three systems here. So I've got a raindrop, I've got a cloud, and I've got a cloud system. Let's get into the cloud system first. So in the cloud system, I've got a cloud timer, which just generates how often a cloud gets generated. Oh, sorry, it's the first step of generating a cloud. Next, under my step system, if it wants to boot up, I basically just look at the cloud timer. If it's greater than zero, start taking away from it. When it's equal to zero, I generate a temp ID. I don't know why that's there, it shouldn't need to be there. Um, and in my temp ID, I generate the cloud. Uh, from there, I then set parameters to the cloud. It's speed of movement, it's max time, time to live, and the reset the cloud timer so it generates a new cloud. That's all that that object does at the moment. Um, under the cloud, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. I run a cluster system. So the cloud itself is actually generated from multiple sprites. Um, you can see my speed. I've got a fade set there. So it looks at when to fade the cloud out. I've got a cloud cluster. So this creates a cloud. Well, let's change that 3 to 12, um, which will generate anywhere between 3 and 12 different sprite objects for this um, object to display the cloud. Uh, basically each of these go through each of the sets. So I've got an X, a Y which generates its position. Uh, the next is the uh, index of the sprite. So because I've got two, in, two sprites in my um, index, it will be either one or, oh, sorry, zero or one because um, I can retrieve the sprite there. Uh, and I'll show you guys the sprites later and how I generated them. Um, my angle is just the generated angle between or negative 5 and 5. My scale is X and Y of um, 0.3 to 0.6. Important information, I have to pass over my X scale back down to my Y scale. Otherwise, things could start looking funky. So basically, this sets a limiting bracket to how weird it's going to look. Uh, the alpha is just setting the cloud alpha between 1 to 5. Let's actually change that to 2, like so. Um, then it just adds to the system. So basically, it just runs a repeat and adds to itself. We've got the rain droplets here. I'm going to leave them on for now, but you can set each cloud to either have rain or not have rain, so that's going to be important later on um, when I develop the next part to this tutorial. In the step event, I just have x plus equals my cloud speed. Note that my cloud speed is represented as a negative, which means my clouds will always move to the left of the screen. Um, if you change it, they'll move to the right of the screen, basically changing it from a negative value to a positive value. Um, my alpha fade is a value that versus the time to live versus the max time, which gives us a percentile value, nothing fancy there. Um, the cloud time to live just forever ticks downwards. Once the cloud's time to live is less than or equal to zero, it will destroy itself. The next big part is the rain. So if rain is engaged, the cloud will look at um, the, the fade factor. So if it's less than 15% or 0.15, it will stop generating rain because it's getting too transparent. It's going to start looking weird with the rain droplets just appearing in thin air. Uh, the next part here is the rain droplet timer. So basically each time it generates a rain droplet, it resets its timer and this will basically fade back out. Oh, basically take it out. It 
basically adds itself into a uh, temp ID, temp direction, and temp speed is passed down. So it just sets all the parameters in here. And that is it. So now if we go over to the rain drop, the rain drop is pretty straightforward, I think. So I've got a line and a drop and then a splatter timer to live. And that just influenced directly into the sprite array. And I'll show you that when we get to that part. In here, I do a collision check. So I want to check to see if I'm colliding with a solid object to change my status. To do that, I need to make sure I run a collision check to make sure I'm colliding first. Then I can do a check against a solid. Collision checks can return ID, so I can use the dot solid equals true function. Um, basically from there, if it's equal to true, we'll change the line to false and the rain droplet to true and speed to zero. Which means when I come to my draw event, because my line drop, my line, my raindrop line is no longer true. We don't draw that function. It's just drawing the raindrop. It's nothing fancy there. Um, and then it will change to draw the raindrop splatter thing. From there, it's just a sprite. But you'll see in here, I've got the raindrop splatter timer. And what that does is I actually look at the sprite. And if the sprite is greater than the raindrop, I then add one to it which means we get one frame played and once it exceeds that it will destroy itself the last big step here is the um outside room fact factor which just basically says if you're outside the room delete now let me get to some of the little bit more important things to understand about this system because each object has been generated um instead of using particles what this means is this could be quite um, taxing on systems that have a lot of objects in play. So we need to be mindful of that when we develop these systems. Because if we tax the system too heavily, we will get a frame rate drop and that will be impacting on the player's um, experience. So just be mindful with that because it can affect player experiences if we go too crazy with it. But with the new developments of Game Maker, and I think it handles it a lot better than it used to. But let's do a quick, quick little test here. So if I go cloud, let's jump to the cloud here, and let's, and I'll show you what I mean. Like we can change these factors quite readily. So here I'm just going to change this to every three to nine steps, basically. So this should create quite heavy rain now. And as you can see, we get quite heavy rain, which looks great. But remember, because each cloud that gets generated will generate rain clouds at the moment, it will potentially bog down the system. So we just need to be super careful of that um, because we don't want to tax the system too heavily. I don't think it's going to, but it's just checking parameters. So if I go in here, and I should be able to go line line and FPS, oh, FPS, and we should be able to keep a track of the FPS. So let's just see what it looks like. So 52, 60, which I don't think it's going to affect it too much. And let me just increase the amount of clouds that get generated. So in a particle system, which is the way I would normally say to do it, a particle system is not actually going to affect FPS as much because it runs it through a special kind of four set loop where it looks at the four and does it through there. So it's kind of like a predictive um, calculation rather than an active calculation, which is easier for the machine to handle. But for the case of this, with proper management, you can do it this way too. It's just looking at making sure you do it the right way. So if I set my clouds to really spawn in as well, let's see if we can stress it out a bit. So... Oh yeah, and before I forget, the clouds are generated in a tool called paint.net. It's a free download. It's just a photo editor. I draw a white background, blur it, draw some gray lines in there to highlight, blur it, and then draw some darker grays in there again to blur it. And this is the effect. Uh, the raindrop is pretty straightforward. It's just a line. And the last one is the sprite for the splatter which just has an animation I've drawn very shittily on it. 
So I hope that explains it to you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. That's today's tutorial. I hope that made some decent sense. Uh, Discord's always open for you guys. I do check it regularly. Feel free to join on and have a chat. And I'll hopefully have the next part with this with hope what I'm hoping to be lightning effects as well and a, potentially a bit of a darkening of screen um, in as well. So this will be up on the Google Drive. Feel free to access it. Oh, there you go. You could see I got a frame rate drop there. Um, and I will talk to you guys next time. Have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.